Hello and welcome to the course on Azure Fundamentals for Data Engineers. Now let's move to the second project. Here, the requirement is to process image file using Azure Cognitive Service and store its output into Cosmos DB. For this project, we are using these components. The first is Azure Data Lake Storage, which is used for accepting our input file. We can upload our input file, which is as image file into containers of uh, ADLS. Second resource is Azure function, which is used for hosting our function code. So we can use Python code here, which uh, do the core logic, like reading input from ADLS, then sending that file to cognitive service, and then getting the result and writing back to Cosmos DB. Another component is computer vision, which is part of uh, Azure Cognitive Service that we are used for uh, converting our image into text form. And finally, we will use our Cosmos DB for storing our final data. So like any other project, let's build an architecture diagram here and uh, try to visualize and understand. So this is how our project looks like. So as I said, we have an ADLS which is used for accepting input file and Azure function app which is used for hosting function code and we have a computer vision so which is used for Im converting image to text and Azure Cosmos DB for storing final output. Our main core logic we will be writing into some function and I prefer uh, Python so you can choose any language that function app support. So that code will check whenever any input file comes here. So that has to send that input file to computer vision and then get the whatever the value computer vision writ uh, written against that image. Then we can do certain processing or transformation here and then whatever the final data we can write it into Cosmos DB. So this is how the project looks at very high level. So let's go ahead and deploy now. Hello and welcome back to this course. Now let's go ahead and deploy our resources. As a first step, so we are going to deploy Azure Data Lake Storage. So log into the Azure portal. So you can use this portal.azure.com and once prompted, you can type your credential. Since we already log into this portal and uh, this is my credential, I can use the same. And again, so I need to pass my password. So once I type my password, then I have to press this yes and uh, log into Azure portal. First, let's create a resource group. So we can see the resource group in the favorite icon here. If it's not coming, so we can search resource group and get that. So let's uh, go to the resource groups menu and we don't have any resource groups. Whatever the resource group we have deployed for the previous project has deleted. So let's go ahead and create a new resource group for our project two. And uh, choose the subscription and uh, resource group name is project 02 and uh, choose the location as Australia East. Then the tag, this is an optional resource. I mean the optional uh, component and uh, we can leave it and review and once this validation is passed we can create. So resource group basically a container or wrapper under which we are placing all our resources. So it's easy to manage our resources like uh, we can delete all the resources at a time if we delete the resource group. This is the resource group we created and uh, inside that we don't have any resources create. Let's go ahead and create Azure Data Lake Storage here. So use this create option to create and uh, search storage account for Azure Data Lake st Storage. You need to choose this storage account and uh, choose this storage account option and uh, create. 
So we need to follow the same uh, set of steps that we have done in our previous project for ADLS. Choose the resource group and subscription, storage uh, account name, project 0 to input. Let's see if this name is available or not. Okay, so we are not getting any uh, error message, so that's fine. And uh, location australia east and uh, performance tier so we need a uh, standard performance tier only we don't need a uh, premium and redundancy option choose the least redundant option which is locally redundant storage or lrs and go to the advanced so here we need to choose adls option enable hierarchical namespace if you're not choosing this option by default it will deploy normal storage account okay so we need to choose this option and networking choose the default and data protection uh, again choose the default then encryption and this also leave default tags as i said it's an optional i'm not giving any tag at this time then review then once this uh, validation is over you will get a validation uh, status so this is passed in case if you have any error or warning so you need to address that before deploying the resources go ahead and uh, hit this create button to deploy our resource so you can see now the deployment has completed so we can go to this resource and create some containers and go to the data lakes storage and uh, by default you can see dollar logs we are going to create one more container with the name input and uh, public access level keep it as private and then create so we can use uh, this storage account and uh, this container for uploading our input file so that's it about uh, deploying ADLS container and uh, ADLS um, storage for our project. So let's go ahead and deploy other resources. Hello and welcome to this course on Azure Fundamental for Data Engineers. Let's go ahead and create function app. So go to the Azure portal and create a new resource and type function app. and uh, create choose the subscription and the resource group so i have only one subscription pay as you go and resource group choose the resource group we have selected for our project too and function app a name my function app 001 let's see whether this name is available no this is not available let's add some more numbers since this name is globally unique so we need to choose the name which is unique in nature so this name dot azure website dot net and uh, choose the option as code and runtime stack you can choose python and you can see dot uh, net node.js Python, Java, PowerShell, and Custom Handler. So these are the runtime stack uh, this function app support. Let's choose Python now. And uh, version of Python, by default, the 3.9. Let's choose that. And the location, Australia East. And you can choose any location which is closer to uh, your area. And make sure you choose all the resources in the same region and operating system for python by default is the linux and the plan type we have different plan so let's choose this consumption which is serverless and hosting and a function app require a separate storage account so by default it's it will create a new storage account when uh, we deploy a function app so this is the storage account which is going to create and if you want to create uh, with some other name so that is also fine or else you can choose an existing resource uh, 
uh, we already deployed but let's go ahead and create a new one so whatever the function code that we deploy the function app will use this storage account to store that data data in the sense whatever the code and supporting file that we uh, publish here and coming to the networking let's choose the default one because the premium only have some networking option so we don't have anything to choose here and monitoring uh, by default uh, application insight will be there and uh, we can just uh, add it because for us to uh, get the log and other information application insight will be better so let's choose the default behavior which is enable application inside again uh, for us to do simple testing this is not uh, really important so you can skip it and uh, use this no option and tag which will describe about this resource so we can skip if uh, this part we don't need to give any tag at this time and review it will do the basic validation and if the validation is uh, okay then you will get this create option highlighted and let's go ahead and create this resource so this deployment has completed let's go ahead and uh, see this resource this is our function app and uh, you can see the details and uh, the main part uh, you can see the function and whatever the function that we deploy here will be listed here and uh, we can add the configuration so whatever the parameters uh, that we use in our function we can add those uh, settings here and whatever the function we deploy will be here so that's it about the function app we have deployed our function app successfully and we will use this function app to uh, host our code hello and welcome back to this course now let's go ahead and create computer vision so we already deployed azure function app and the adls storage now let's go ahead and create cognitive service computer vision so create and search compute computer vision select this and uh, create so choose the subscription and uh, resource group where you want to deploy and uh, choose the region and name you can give project to computer vision 01 okay and pricing tier for this demo i'm choosing free tier which is 20 calls per minute this is okay for me and it support two tier free and standard for our testing free is enough and uh, you have to click this to confirm that you accept this okay and then next go to the networking choose the default available option all networks and coming to the identity leave it as default and tag it's an optional resource we are leaving it for now and uh, review for uh, validation and azure will do some basic validation in backend and once the validation is passed we can deploy our resource by this create resource option so the deployment will uh, take some time and uh, you can see the status here so that's it the deployment has uh, completed successfully and we can go to this resource computer vision and this is how our resource looks like and uh, mainly uh, we need to collect certain properties uh, for this computer vision resource so that we can get from keys and endpoint so we will be using these keys and endpoints in our program so you can just copy that key 
or else you can just use this show keys option to display that key but for us to do just a copy to clipboard it will copy that key so you need either of this key anyone okay and endpoint also required that's it about computer vision. We will use these properties in our Python code. Hello and welcome back to this course. So far we have deployed ADLS, Azure function and computer vision. So we need one more resource which is Cosmos DB. Let's go ahead and create that resource. So use this option to create the resource and uh, type Cosmos. db you can see here azure cosmos db use that option and create so we need to uh, choose this api option i'm choosing core sql so this is uh, the default and recommended one use this option to create and uh, choose the resource group where we want to deploy okay so I'm going to deploy it in the under project 02, which is the resource group which I created and account name. So I'm just using project 02 Cosmos 01, whatever the name you can give. And again, using the location as Australia East. And the capacity mode, I'm choosing the serverless. And uh, here I'm not con uh, considering anything about the performance. So mainly uh, looking for low cost uh, deployment mode. Uh, and uh, we are just uh, using uh, this tool for keeping our final result file. And global distribution availability zone, we can leave it as disabled. And networking, choose the default option as all network. Backup policy and again uh, backup storage redundancy use this locally redundant and the remaining i leave it as default encryption choose the default which is service managed key and tags is an optional resource leaving it and then review so this will do the basic validation and uh, once the validation is success we can go ahead and create this uh, resource Now our Cosmos DB has deployed successfully. We can go to the resource and uh, see its detail. And uh, we can use this data explorer option to visualize and see uh, is there any tables or is, is there anything is created. And uh, this is how uh, it looks like. And you can create a container and uh, database, etc. So we are not creating anything manually. We will uh, use a function app code to uh, do that. Okay. So only thing you have to do is you have to deploy the Azure Cosmos DB and uh, get all these uh, things up and running. So from the Cosmos DB, what we need is we just need this key information, especially the primary or secondary connection string you might need. So this information you need and uh, so you need to set it in function app so that we will do later and that's it about deploying the resources so we have seen how to deploy adls function app computer vision and cosmos db so these are the four resources we need to uh, we need for in our project hello and welcome back so far we have seen the deployment of various Azure resources that we are going to use in this project. Now let's focus on the development. So we are using Visual Studio code for our development and uh, we will be using a Python code here. The first step, so we need to install Python in our machine. Open the browser and uh, download this Python software. So just use download python so we uh, need the version 3.9 so 
so we can go to the official uh, python website and uh, download uh, 3.9 whatever the release we need better we can choose uh, some 3.9 something and uh, use this download option to download and uh, scroll down a little bit and uh, you can see whatever the file which is matching with your operating system and uh, I'm just choosing Windows installer 64 bit and uh, which is 3.912 and uh, click and continue the installation so better right click sorry go to the downloads location right click and uh, use this option run as administrator then uh, choose this option so that it will be added to your path otherwise we have to manually go and add it into the environment variable so if you add it uh, this will automatically add into the path then so we have two options so one is a default installation second is a customized so customized option will let you to choose your uh, destination directory where you want to place these files I am okay with this default see us users vm admin app data local so this is the path where our uh, python will be installed so that's it and uh, just uh, disable path length limit that is fine and then close so we can verify the installation from this command prompt just use cmd and uh, just type python it will show you the version you have installed and also you can verify it's uh, already added into the environment variable okay so we can just use echo percentage path percentage so that will uh, list you the location where your python has installed so this is the place your python uh, binary is placed so next uh, what we need is uh, azure function core tool so for that just uh, open your browser again download azure function core tools okay so you can go to this official microsoft uh, documentation site and uh, this is saying like some prerequisites and uh, version 4 so you can choose the version 4 and uh, choose the operating system which is matching with your uh, operating system so I'm using a Windows machine and uh, version 4.x Windows 64. So this is the one which I'm going to use. So this is also downloaded and uh, go to the download location. So this is the function core tool. Just uh, please right click and uh, install. accept this license agreement and then continue and by default it it is placing in program files function core tool this is okay and then go ahead and install so that's it we have uh, successfully installed function core tool and uh, the next step is install visual studio code if you already have visual studio code you can skip this step so download visual studio code okay so go to this site code.visualstudio.com and uh, download and install visual studio code so choose the one which is matching with your current operating system i'm using windows machine this is fine and you can see 
here it's uh, downloaded go ahead and install this tool also okay so this is saying like uh, we are not administrator and uh, what we can do is we can just uh, cancel this and go to the location okay let's use this option right click and run as administrator accept this license agreement continue and choose the default location and next then if you want to create a desktop uh, icon that is fine add it and then install so that's it we can now launch visual studio code so click this finish icon to launch this code so then what we have to do is we just need to install uh, plugins for python and uh, azure function so we can go to this extension option and uh, search extension here you can choose this python so or else just to type python it will be there so just install that python And another plugin uh, we need is Azure. Azure Functions. Okay. So this is the one we needed. Azure Functions. Choose that and install. you can see once we install uh, the plugin so you can see one a new icon has come here so you can uh, click here and uh, see uh, the resources which is available in our azure so we, it's not listing anything so the reason is we have to sign into azure first okay come here then sign into azure So now pop-up has come choose the browser which you want to use so we can use this chrome or internet explorer that is fine click ok so this will ask you to log in to your azure portal so use your credential Right. then we can close this browser so once you log in you can see your subscription here and whatever the resources we deployed will be a listing here so this is the cosmos that we deployed so this is a function app we de deployed etc so this is the subscription and uh, you can see that detail here okay so what you have to do is so once you install the plugin you can go to the resource and uh, if it's not already a login to your subscription you can log in that so you can use your credential the same credential that you use for logging into your portal and once you log in you can see uh, your subscription details and the resources here hello and welcome back to this course in our previous video we have seen how to install visual studio code and other prerequisites that we needed for our development now let's try to create a function app in this visual studio and for that so what you have to do is just go to this view and uh, select this command palette you can use a control shift p to open that and here you just type function then uh, project so what you have to do first is azure function 
create new project so this is the property you need to choose so this is basically going to create a new project for us you can choose some location so wherever you want to create create some directory so azure project some name you can give and choose those directory and select and what type of project you are going to uh, do so this is a python project choose the language as python and uh, it's displaying the python which is already installed so 3.9.12 so if it is not displaying here either you have to close this visual studio code and reopen also make sure you install python already and path is added if path is not added you have to give the complete path where your python executable available choose this python 3.912 and a template so there are a lot of built-in template so you can choose one template so based on that template your function will be created so in our case we are uh, our function is a blob storage trigger the blob storage trigger means our trigger is caused by some blob file upload so we have to choose this blob storage trigger and uh, the function name initial function name whatever the name we need so I'm just writing image uh, to text whatever the some meaningful name you can give so this is the name of the function that I'm going to add then enter then select settings uh, for local settings what you have to choose is so if, if this is the first time you are deploying or you are creating just use this create local app setting then choose the input uh, directory okay so the directory is the project to input and whatever the path where you want to uh, keep your input file or when you want uh, this to start so you can choose those location uh, from your Azure portal. So you can go to your Azure portal and uh, see uh, your uh, container or get your container name. You can see here. So this is your uh, input directory we are expecting and uh, data lake storage and container so this is the name of the container uh, that is input so you have to use instead of sample work item input input slash within the brace name so this name stands for the file name whatever the file name we uh, are adding here so you have to choose this as uh, your storage trigger then enter then you can open the project either in a new window or in the current window so we can just use let it open in the current window itself so this is going to create some files and uh, will uh, dip, display that detail here in this window itself so you, you can see the status here you have to wait some time until this is finished so once it's finished just to trust this uh, files in the directory yes that's it now if you look into uh, uh, the main explorer page you can see uh, this is our function Azure FENC project under this directory uh, there is another sub directory image to text so this is the function name we have given and under that there are a lot of built-in files are created so init.py so this is our main uh, python file where uh, we are going to write our code logic so function.json uh, will have the binding information the binding in the sense like uh, with whom uh, this uh, python is going to communicate so first thing we have already given that blob trigger so the name is my blob and the type is the blob trigger and it's in the direction in direction in means it's coming towards the 
uh, function app code so that means that we are taking the input from this uh, location and the path is input slash uh, within the brace name so the name stands for whatever the name of the file and the connection name is the project uh, two zero input storage so we are going to use this properties inside our init file you can see the my blob so my blob is nothing but uh, this one and which is of blob trigger and uh, uh, we have seen one more name right the project to input storage whatever the credentials and other information uh, will be on this uh, property so if you want to see that property you can go to the local settings see project 2 so this will contain the connection string okay so this by default added when we added as input trigger okay and what we have to add is just to go to this part come to this part Azure and uh, expand this workspace expand and functions so this is the function we have created so in our case so we have a one binding so which is the input binding so we are accepting the file from uh, in blob storage and similarly we need one more binding which is basically out in nature and we are going to write in that that is in the of type cosmos so what you can do here is just to right click here and use this option add binding and uh, we have to choose what type of binding is it is it an inbound or outbound so in our case outbound so we are, have already one inbound which is our blob storage trigger and outbound we can choose that and what type of uh, uh, outbound we have to choose so this is of type cosmos db choose that and uh, the name that we use to identify this bind so whatever the name uh, you can add so out uh, document or simply out or whatever the name you can so I'm giving the name as doc okay so this is the name which I'm going to use uh, for this and uh, whatever the cosmos database that uh, where our data will be written so you can use some name so I'm writing this database name as out database and whatever the collection name so collection is similar to the table and my collection that is also fine and uh, if database doesn't exist what to do database and collection do we want to create automatically yes choose that option to true okay and uh, uh, again uh, local settings and uh, so we can just use uh, uh, this local settings and create a new local app settings for this just click plus and uh, choose the database so database in the sense cosmos db choose that and uh, partition so just leave it uh, default and uh, outbinding uh, this is also we can uh, use it as default so now you can see the basically there is one file added function.json initially it was having only inbound and now you can see there is a uh, another type cosmos db and its name is doc and uh, which is of outbound direction is out and uh, uh, this is the connection uh, string and here the connection uh, name is this one so we can see those information from here so this file is the function.json and you can see this local settings one more uh, connection string so this is basically cosmos db connection property so this is uh, storage connection string okay so this contain uh, the complete connection string for connecting those resources so the reason why we are we were able to add it directly because we already uh, connected to azure subscription and uh, which was allowing us to display this uh, properties now what we have to do is so we have to go to this init.py so and i already uh, have the file ready 
so we can use this file what I'm going to use is I'll, I'll be uploading uh, I, I, I mean I've, I've attached this file to this video you can download and use the same file only thing is you have to modify this property that I will also will be modifying and I will show you how to collect that property just copy this entire content and delete it and paste it here okay so this is what we need to uh, do here just to paste it and then save it like I said so these are the pr two properties I'm just commenting out and uh, using it again because for the time being let's hard code these properties save it so what we need is so we just need that uh, key and uh, API endpoint for our computer vision so let's uh, collect that information from our Azure portal so this is our Azure portal so let's go to the resource group and uh, go to the computer vision then in the com under computer vision so you can go to this property keys and endpoint and uh, uh, choose this option copy to clipboard to copy that key so you can just uh, show this key from here and uh, basically you can use this copy clipboard to copy that and uh, paste it so this is the subscription key then the next property is api endpoint you can get that property from here so this is the endpoint copy it paste it here so please make a note of these changes so this values we just commented out and hard coded this value so when we deploy this function to function app so we will be changing it back we are not hard coding again so this is not the best practice to hard code but for our testing we are just adding this so subscription key and api endpoint that is fine now what we have to do is you can see uh, certain uh, properties uh, here which is showing like this uh, module doesn't exist what we have to do is there is a file called requirement.txt so we can go to that file and add that you can see Azure function is there request is there just add it and save it so make sure you save this file also and then uh, local settings you can close everything okay so so this is our function image to text and uh, this will this is a blob triggered and output will be written into cosmos hello and welcome back to this course now let's run this function and validate so we can uh, come here okay and uh, select the function so this is the function we have uh, updated now and uh, use this start debugging you can use the keyboard shortcut f5 and uh, this will install requirement.txt if you are doing it the first time otherwise it will try to start the function and uh, you will get a message like the worker the process has uh, already started okay so next uh, we will try to upload some uh, input file and uh, also we will see where we are getting our output so this is a cosmos db and our data will be written to some database here so currently it's empty and this is the uh, container okay so this is a storage account and this is the container where we are uploading our input file so whenever we upload any input file to this location our function will get triggered so use this upload option and go ahead and upload some file so this is the first image let's go ahead and upload this and uh, then now let's come back to our function 
you can see uh, this is started running and uh, this is the message it's uh, I mean the log message it's uh, printed and uh, finally uh, this is executed now if we uh, come back to our cosmos and uh, refresh you can uh, see this is database out database is created and inside this the collection has created and uh, coming to the items uh, you can see one entry here and uh, you can see the caption and other details whatever the values it's up updated to cosmos and if you upload some other file let's upload this vladimir putin image and uh, go ahead and uh, upload and uh, back to here you can see the vladimir putin wearing a suit and tie and similarly you can upload uh, some other files narendra modi and uh, upload it and our computer vision can uh, identify the picture and whatever the output it's generated we are writing into cosmos db and coming to the cosmos just to refresh you can see all the entries okay here and uh, if you upload something else like uh, any other image so you can see that also just uh, go ahead and upload this Taj Mahal image and uh, upload it and uh, if you just refresh here you can see the fourth entry right a group of people standing in front of Taj Mahal and uh, this is a confidence level so similarly if you upload anything to this input container so which is our um, uh, I mean that we configured into our function and uh, it will write into uh, this output location hello and welcome back now let's uh, try to deploy this into function app so before that let me clean all database uh, that we created and uh, its name is out database let me clean this from the cosmos also whatever the input file i have already uploaded i'm just going to delete it okay so now this is empty this is also empty and what i have to go uh, here is I have to go to the project and uh, go to the function app. So this is the function app uh, where we are going to deploy our function. And uh, if you go into the functions, you can see nothing is there. And uh, what we have to do is we have to go to uh, settings, under settings, configuration, and we need to add certain values here. So first, uh, let's uh, deploy it, uh, our function here, and uh, we'll add those uh, value. So to deploy this uh, function app, function into function app, so let's uh, go to the function where we created, and uh, right right click and uh, deploy to function app. Then choose the function name. So my function app. So this is the one. And uh, choose it. And uh, if you want to see the detail log, so you can get it from here. Right. So this will take some time uh, to upload these files and uh, publish it. So now the deployment is successful if we come back to Azure portal and uh, check this Azure function. And coming to the functions. So you can see the function that we already deployed. 
and uh, you can just uh, come here and code and test whatever the python code which is available you can see here uh, but uh, actually we missed to update it again we need to redeploy the reason is uh, again this is in hard coded state uh, it's not uh, good to hard code here so we will just uh, uh, use uh, our redeployment option let's do that so what we have to do is just to go to this place and uh, remove the comments and uh, this value we will take it out and uh, add somewhere in the some notepad we can use it later and uh, save it then use this option sorry right click and uh, deploy to function app and choose the function app the same function app and uh, deploy you can see the deployment status from here and uh, it's starting and we it will take some time now you can see this deployment is completed we'll come back to the portal and uh, refresh and uh, choose that function and uh, use this option code and test and validate our python file right you can see this is here and if you look into the integration uh, you can see the inbound and outbound options so this is inbound and uh, this is outbound uh, and that is fine and another thing we need to uh, do here is so go to settings and add this configuration so we need to add the configuration and its uh, values there are few configuration so the first one is the one we have uh, taken out like uh, subscription key and api endpoint okay so in our uh, from our code we have taken that subscription key and uh, sorry subscription key basically so this is the variable we are expecting and uh, the value we just need to use okay use this variable and uh, new application setting and uh, whatever the value so we have taken the value uh, computer vision subscription get that and uh, add here similarly the next parameter is computer vision api endpoint then its value is this one so this is the endpoint value and also we need a few more things what you have to do is just expand this and uh, use this function dot json and these two properties also you need to set so you can go to the local uh, settings the project uh, to input and cosmos these two values we need to set so this is the one project to input storage choose this and uh, <coughs> uh, copy its value so this is the value then without double quote we will just take it and add it here then another one what we need is the cosmos connection properties so that is also here so this is the property and its value sorry and its value is here okay copy that and add it here okay same string we copied 
so whatever the properties so let me just summarize it so in local settings we have used uh, two connection string for uh, storage and document DB so this two that mainly we are using here okay so this two connection settings uh, and uh, we need and along with that what so two environment variables like computer vision subscription and endpoint that is also we need to set here in the function app so once these are set then save it then uh, we need to restart this function app so if you are not adding this value definitely our function code may not work so go to the overview page and then restart okay so this is successfully restart and now let's go to this function then log to text and uh, go to the monitor page so the monitor page will show you uh, that log status so whenever uh, when it's run how many times it's run and also we will get some log information so this page definitely uh, has some lag whenever you update something it will take some time to update this page but let's uh, just try this uh, settings so we can ensure like if data is coming to the cosmos our function is working so this time we are not running the function from visual studio code so let's uh, close our visual studio project and uh, try to upload something here upload then okay so we have uploaded and uh, you can just see uh, this is uh, started and some uh, we, we got some message stating so this is the input file we have updated and at the same time let's just refresh here and uh, see uh, this value you can see items one entry so which is nothing like job bed and photo so I can upload another one and uh, see Statue of Liberty upload and uh, maybe here we can see the next message right and uh, also the invocation you will get how many times it's invoked and the other thing but again there is a delay uh, for uh, getting this page updated uh, but uh, you will get the final output here and you can validate so this is the statue of liberty one so this way we have a up updated i mean we have a published our code into function app and uh, this function is working uh, independently so we don't need to uh, run from our visual studio code so this is how we publish our code hello and welcome back to this course now let's go through the function code and understand its flaw before that let me just quickly give you an overview of function so what a function is a function is a serverless solution or function app we call azure function or function app that is a serverless solution allows us to write our code and deploy it so we don't need to maintain our infrastructure Azure will take care of that. So we just need to focus on our development activity and deploy it into Azure function. And uh, coming to the Azure function, so these two things you need to remember. So one is trigger, second is bindings. Triggers are nothing but which uh, cause functions to run. Okay. So for example, in our case, so we just need a storage trigger. So storage trigger means uh, something happened to our storage container here uh, we are expecting some files to upload then the, our function has to run so that is a trigger similarly there are a lot of triggers it support and there can be only a single trigger associated with a function okay 
So trigger is basically for invoking a function code. And uh, one thing you remember is a function have exactly one trigger. We cannot have more than one trigger for a function. Second term is binding. Okay. So binding is the way to connect to other resources. Okay. So we will declare. Okay. So these are the resources that we are going to connect. And again, the binding can be of two types in or out. That means input binding or output binding. So input binding is something like we read and output binding is something like we route, we write. I mean the we in the sense our function code. So the main advantage of using this binding property is so we don't need to hard code. So we don't need to use the connection uh, URL or uh, connection keys for accessing the resources. Instead, we can use those binding property as a parameter to our function code. Okay. So in our case, so we are defining an in binding as storage account and out binding as Cosmos. Similarly, we can have a multiple in and out bindings associated with a function. So how we access those binding variable as a parameter, we will see in our example code. So this is our function code underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. So the first part is self-explanatory. So we are importing certain modules. So mainly the request uh, Azure.functions, OS and logging. So these are the modules that we are going to use here. And uh, this part, so this is the subscription key and uh, API endpoint for our computer vision. So I already explained how to collect these properties. So OS.environment is used for getting this value for this property that we set in Azure function app. Okay. So basically this is expecting uh, the key and this is the endpoint. Headers is something like we pass when we call uh, computer vision API and parameters. So this is also for parameters uh, for constructing the URL. So along with the URL that we use for invoking computer vision. So we just need like a visual features equal to description and uh, language is equal to en. So either you can hard code this like a uh, uh, question mark equal to this and followed by ampersand like that. So URL lib parsing uh, function you can use for constructing that. So this params we will use when we construct this URL for invoking our computer vision. And uh, headers and uh, params are two uh, dictionaries. So you can see these are the key and value uh, format that we will be using in our uh, upcoming code. So if you look into our main uh, function, uh, you can see my blog, which is of type func dot uh, input stream and doc which is of type func dot out. So my blob is our binding name. That means this is an input binding and doc is output binding. So this is how we access our binding variables. So my blob and doc. So if you look into the function.json file, so you can see those my blob is this one and this name is doc. So this is of type in and this is of type out. Okay, so if you use my blob, so you can read my blob dot read means it will read from this storage account again this connection string. So we have defined somewhere in the local properties or you can define that in the function setting itself. Okay, and uh, so this is the arguments for our main function. And logging.info is used for logging. Okay. So this is a message that will print when we execute our function code. So just for displaying our uh, message in the screen. So if you are executing from the Visual Studio, it will uh, display this message like uh, so this is processed and uh, uh, and this is the name my blob dot name means that name of the file that we upload. So my blob is again it's an in uh, binding name 
and uh, its length in byte that is also just a printing and we want that file into a variable img underscore data so which is uh, nothing but we are reading my blog read uh, function we are calling so that means whenever you upload an image file into a container that will be read and available into this variable so next part we are constructing that url for invoking computer vision so this is the url we are going to construct and the format is a, a string function so nothing like uh, it will uh, replace this and this with uh, the value in this variable and this variable respectively so if you print that api url and uh, you will get a uh, bigger url like http uh, colon slash slash that computer vision then vision uh, this thing so, okay so dollar zero is the api endpoint that we already have here and uh, uh, params is nothing but whatever the uh, parameters like that we are passing along with this url so api url is something like we need okay and here what we are using is request.post so this is for posting uh, an http request so instead of this you can use a postman also if you want to test in graphical option so the post function we need to pass as an uh, http url so this url is nothing but the full uh, url that we are using here so that is nothing but computer vision url headers so headers define uh, content type and uh, key okay so headers is a, a hash i mean uh, that we already defined here dictionary <laughs> so that will have a content type and a key so that is also passing here and data means whatever the data we read so that is something like our image file so this value if we do post it will post to computer vision and computer vision will return some value so that return value we will be storing into the variable r okay so r will have whatever the value computer vision returns and next thing is we are uh, converting that into json so r dot json and we'll be storing it into a variable called past and uh, here we are printing that entire json file uh, here in the log dot info and uh, we are just uh, formatting that intent and uh, sorting uh, then then dumping that information into uh, the screen so the next part is we are not using this entire json output we just need a subset of this and uh, for writing it into cosmos for that we are creating an empty dictionary okay with the name out data and uh, we just need the name okay my blob dot name my blob is our inbound uh, you already know so the inbound which is a storage account and dot name so name means whatever the name of the file that we upload okay so outdoor out data dictionary will have a one uh, entry name and its value then whatever the past uh, value the past value means whatever the value returned by uh, this computer vision from that we are just getting from the description uh, tags okay so there is something like a tags a list of tags you will get for an image so that value maybe this is an array okay so that array we are uh, converting into a string by joining okay with uh, space so this one out that dot text will contain uh, space separated maybe instead of space you can have comma or any other operator that is also fine uh, this values concatenated string with the space so that will be adding for text and the next is a caption which is also again a subset of the json file parse json from the parse json description then captions that is also we are getting so this out data dictionary will have some subset of values like uh, the file name and the tags and captions that we are dumping here just for uh, a printing output and uh, display while this function run and uh, finally so we have our value in this dictionary we need to write it back to uh, our cosmos okay so that is what we are doing here doc dot set so doc is nothing but our 
uh, out binding variable name okay so doc means doc is our cosmos we have already defined doc means which is a type of cosmos and its properties are here and the connection string we uh, already set right and uh, <clears throat> we are using doc dot set means so we are we just need to write it and we are converting this json uh, output out data into this format okay from json func dot document format this is just a type conversion and uh, writing it into doc so writing it into doc means writing it into cosmos then it will choose whatever the collection database name that we define in our configuration and uh, all this logic like uh, invoking function app then uh, writing into uh, this cosmos we have uh, written that into try uh, accept accept logic suppose there may be chance like uh, any uh, exception happen so in that case we have to handle that and the error message has to print so this is how the code uh, overall looks like so in uh, short the code will have uh, two arguments one is the input and this is the output from the input read that image and uh, invoke uh, a rest api post function uh, with computer vision and whatever the results we are getting converting and uh, taking the subset of that and uh, writing it into cosmos db i hope uh, this is very clear thank you for watching this video we will see in the next topic bye